Hey guys, so I know it's a mess over here, so pardon that. But I'm going to be doing a review on the Perun V2. This is an optical MOSFET, kind of like a Gate Titan, and I have had very bad experiences with the Gate Titans. A couple people ask me all the time, why do you hate them, why do you hate them? I've worked with about five of them, and only one of them worked. There was even one time where it was broken out of the box for a customer, and I ordered a new one for him, or he ordered a new one and had it shipped to me, and I had problems with the new one as well. So, I'm not a fan of them at all. So, I'm hoping that the Perun can kind of do the optical uh, system justice. So, the other upgrades that are going to be put in this gun, this is a ASL Falcon. I'm not going to be filming me upgrading this. I'm just doing the strictly uh, the Perun review. Generally, I don't recommend these. The ASL is not really very good. I'm going to tear it open and see what's in it. But this is an SRC OEM gearbox. And they've been in here for years. And they're not good. The, luckily, this is going to be a CQB build. So it's going to be a Garter SP110. And I'm short stroking by like two teeth to get 350 under 350. So it's going to be a pretty low stress gun. So I don't think that gearbox shell is going to crack at all. They do radius them out of the box. So that's... I guess a good thing it's only on the bottom though that they radius so I don't know still not a huge fan of them but it is a low stress gun it is going to be shooting almost 30 rounds a second though okay just a side note on this gearbox as I pull it apart um I've already noted one bad thing and I've known this with the SRC gearboxes before but it looks like the Tamiya connector gets stuck inside of the receiver and of course I'm not using these wires because I'm using the Perun. But it's like you cannot pull it through. Like half of the connector is coming through but the full thing is not. And it's like I don't think it's po even possible. If somebody knows how in the world have you gotten this out. Most of the time in this case you'll have to have the receiver tethered to the gearbox when you work on it. But in my case I don't need the Tamiya connector or the wires in general but you cannot pull it through so basically what I'm gonna do is literally cut the wires alright so this is the first time opening this MOSFET so here is the scan codes for I guess install guide right yeah manual um, I don't know if I'll need this stuff I hope I don't because, what do we have in here? Like the optical sensors for the selector plate, the stickers. I really hope I don't have to mess with any of this stuff. Those stickers. I really hope not. And then there's the program sheet, which I will include with the guy, the guy's gun. But I'm probably just going to keep it on semi and full auto. But it does come with the stickers just in case. Again, this is just me opening it up and starting to install it, so I don't know what to expect. But let's go ahead and break the seal on the MOSFET. So these are actually on pre-order on eBay. I guess they could have come in stock, but I looked last week and they were pre-ordered. So depending on how this goes, I might recommend you guys get one. Okay, I kind of like the wiring. The wiring is very loose. So some problems with wiring that's very stiff, it's when it's in a box, like a um, BTC Spectre, the wiring is very rigid and hard to bend. So for installing, potentially this could be easier, especially for newer people. And if I'm not mistaken, this is, this is definitely looser than the Titans as well. So... It splits open like a gate titan, but it is smaller, at least the top portion. So, first of all, I'm going to install the bottom portion inside of the gearbox shell. Alright, so after I got the unit actually screwed in place with the one screw, I am now routing the wires through. The signal wire is the small red one. That is the one you want to run underneath the motor as low as you can as low as possible and that's because it's the signal wire it's very very important 
and it's very small so like once it tears it can just rip completely very easily basically tear in half and then you'll get no circuit so we put the other one the black one that goes across we put that over top also what could be a good idea is um, glue you can glue the wires down the problem with that is you can tear the insulation off of the wires if you need to remove the MOSFET from a different gun. So that's why I don't recommend switching up MOSFETs. If you want like a BTC, pop it in there, glue the wires down so they're nice and secure, and don't rip it out and switch for something else, unless it breaks. If it breaks, I've had that happen before with BTCs, you know, a broken one, and I rip the wires out and they're glued and it just rips the wires apart and I sent it back to BTC to get fixed because it already needed fixed but when I pulled it out of the shell because I had glued it it rips the wires so then that's another thing that he has to fix instead of like one of the selector plates which is being the only problem so it's more of a problem for him than anything uh, BTC but that's just something to be aware of so the way everything goes in seems to be pretty promising there are switches, and so I'm not going to touch any of these, or sorry, sensors. I'm not going to touch these sensors because you can get grease on them, and with the gate tightens, that is a big problem. So I don't know how sensitive, sensitive these are. I will mention there's also a fuse in here. This is a 40 amp. Good for a 40 amp. There's another one that it includes, I'm guessing this is 30, 25. So I'm not sure when you would want to run the smaller one maybe for like a lower stress gun but this is a pretty low stress gun so 40 amps fuse that's in here now should not blow if if it does there's a major major problem um so i'm gonna keep the 40 amp in there it is wired to dean's god bless on that uh love it that it's dean the btc's come like that as well it does come with a dean's for your battery so you can actually switch your battery to dean's but i already have Dean's batteries to test. Okay, so it looks like it worked. The actual barcode or whatever you call that. So there's basic information. I'm going to read through this and I'll let you know what it says. Okay, so the manual is kind of small, but it does have some good information and it has all the main settings that I'm looking for. And that would be fire modes. You can change like safe, semi, full auto. You can do three numbers, two to five round is what's on here, and obviously full auto. You can also do pull and release, which is pretty cool. Some people like that. I'm not into that, but you can do binary on here. Pre cocking um, is also another setting that I really like to see. Lipo protection. Double shot is the binary mode. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. For the actual settings and stuff so one thing I've noticed about the new SHS gears I don't know if it's a new gen but you can see through the gear so the holes here you can actually see through and with the old gears you used to never be able to do that unless I'm tripping but I don't think I am because that is something new oh I have 10 to 1 sperm bevel siege tech that never worked right <laughs> sitting in there those are supposed to be the god gears, but aren't. Hmm. So, that's weird. It's like they skeletonized it. That's interesting. It's like they made the holes bigger, and then they go all the way through. That's weird. I don't know if maybe them being lighter, that could help, or if that's a structural weakness. I don't know. So, these are apparently the new gens. Everything else looks the same. It kind of looks like the anodizing or the, like heat treating is actually better so we'll see I'm gonna install these and see how they run okay so I've been sitting here trying to mess with this for a little while and I've been having some problems so this is definitely not as simple as a BTC BTCs are so simple that you pull them out of the box you install them and it's either you know a selector plate uh, the metal tab you can use heat shrink I use heat shrink all the time so that the buttons are pressed very simple and then you shorten the trigger pull for the micro switch so it, you know it's super super short and then it hits the micro switch other than that there's nothing else you have to do there's no screwing around with stickers and all that sort of stuff and that's why i love the btc's you can install them like that 
and tune them very easily. And it's these Bluetooth Spectre, the Mark IIs, are just incredible. The Perun V2 definitely is uh, not as simple, and it's giving me a headache, basically. So, there's a first run on here. Um, it shows the factory settings, hair trigger, which obviously you can shim the trigger. But it talks about the position of the trigger, and I'm having problems setting the position of the trigger. What's happening here is the first run, it says... Uh, plug the battery in, put the selector switch to auto, pull the trigger and hold in any position in which uh, a signal sound can be heard until it stops. Uh, if you want a shorter trigger pull, stop pulling the trigger further once the signal has started to be heard and keep it there until the setting is saved. Um, so I guess it's like saving the length of the trigger pull in there, but I've done it a couple times and it's not working so good now this can be remedied because you can shorten the trigger pull on its own you can have the pull all the way back here but still shim it in two different spots so I can still fine tune the trigger on this without too much trouble so I'm not going to even mess with this this is way too confusing as far as the trigger pull sensors and that's why I don't like sensors, because they're fine-tunable, but this stuff is not good for a tech like me that sits here and cranks out gun after gun after gun and tunes stuff and is basically being paid very little. I'm not at a shop doing this, being paid hourly. I'm sitting here doing my own work in my own basement, and I'm having problems with it, and it's taking time out of my day for that. Setting up a gun and doing adjustments is a lot worse now because... You have to tune the MOSFET for your gun. So with BTCs, basically I tune the gun for the MOSFET. You see what I'm saying? Whereas with these sensor MOSFETs, you have to calibrate them. You have to do all this stuff before you can even see if your gun's feeding, shooting the right FPS. Every single function of the gun you cannot test until you've calibrated the MOSFET. So after, so after I have it apart, I notice there's no broken pieces, the wire's not damaged, nothing is damaged in any way, and then I have to do this because I don't know if there's a problem with the gun, you know. There could be, and I don't know what's up with it, because the MOSFET's giving me trouble. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook up everything, and I'm going to tune the trigger um, to where it's at so I can get that fixed, and then I'm going to add the stickers to the side of the selector plate. And then also the sticker on the bottom of the gearbox, the black one, which is what I didn't know if I had to use to block out light is what they say it's for. Sometimes I think it's not needed, but I'm going to put it on there regardless. And then some of the selector plate stickers and try to figure this out. And I'll be back. Um, hopefully the next time I am seeing you guys, I have it completely together and have figured it out. Okay, so I had problems with the selector plate, and I had to use the stickers. So, I'm happy with the performance on the gun in terms of actual performance, like the features, I guess, and the trigger pull and everything. But you have to modify everything. And let me explain. So, with the trigger, you have to shorten the trigger pull with physically, like with pieces of plastic, you can also adjust it with the sensor, so you can adjust it, um, but it's still going to not be peak performance without ships, just flat out. Some people like the really long trigger pull with the you know first bit firing the gun, but having this extra play is just dumb. It's really stupid. Uh, real guns are not like that, so you can't even say, oh, real guns have long trigger pull. No, they don't. They're mechanical, so they're not electrical electronic um but i don't even know why people compare an airsoft gun to a real gun anyways in terms of trunable it's just stupid part of it's just learning the system which i'm actually pretty impressed that three hours for the first install of mine is actually pretty good it's a completely different system so i got the trigger tuned for the length i would just leave it where it comes out of the box and then physically shorten the pull that is my advice that's what i did on here the stock pull, and then you use two shims on two different parts. One really attached to the trigger, the other one's attached to the shell, gearbox shell. Um, 
and uh, just to physically shorten the pull. That's the best bet, honestly. Motor heat is actually very minimum. Battery heat's very minimum for the build that it's the actual system that it's running, the gears and motor and stuff. It's actually very cold setup, which is very good for power efficiency and the health of the gun. Overall, I'm actually enjoying it. So right here, that's the pull. So it's in the very back. So there's a little bit of play in front, which I don't mind, honestly. You can work the trigger because it's the sensor, so there's no actual physical reset. It is pre-cocked on semi, and then full auto. It's about 28 rounds a second. I have not put it through the chrono yet. I haven't tested the gun, but it sounds pretty nice. It sounds beautiful, honestly, for a pretty budget gun. I mean, the internals costed a decent amount for them, but including shipping, it wasn't all that bad. Um, so we're going to go ahead and shoot it. I might be doing hop-up upgrades or at least tuning because the unit is loose in the receiver. So I'm sure I'll have to work on that. But hopefully the gearbox is done. I mean, it's pretty impressive in terms of trigger response. There's no delay and it's pre-cocked right now. So it's actually really, really responsive. So I'm actually really pleased. It just takes more fine-tuning and requires more steps when compared to a BTC. But it's still a good option for a MOSFET. Really good option. I think they're retailing about a hundred bucks, which is is fair. I'd say between mm, 90 and 110 I, is a fair spot for a MOSFET like this. The lower the price, the more it's going to be uh, enticing to players though. I prefer this. I'm just going to say right now, this is better than the Gate Titan because I had such headaches with that and again I had five of those and every single one but one has been complete crap either broken out of the box or they broke while I was working on the gun or just constant problems this one I have not put it through its paces but it has not acted funky it does fire and safe because I shortened the trigger pull and took out the the actual block in there so he'll just have to be safe with the gun and then on full auto it's cycle completion, so he'll do a, a burst on full auto and then put it on safe and unplug the battery for, you know, going home so that the spring is completely decompressed. But I'm going to go ahead and go shoot this, chrono it, get it uh, tested, and see how it shoots. And hopefully I'll be home at a decent time tomorrow from work before it gets dark because it's winter and it gets dark really early. So hopefully I'll be able to make a video on this actually shooting tomorrow, actual um, overview video. So if you have any questions or anything, let me know. But I am pleased so far. I have the version 3 optical that I'm hoping to test in a friend's AK. Uh, as soon as he gets some money to, for upgrades in his gun, we'll see when that is. I might just toss it in his gun anyways when I find some time. So that'll be coming. Uh, the, they sent me a couple other knickknacks and other MOSFETs, and I'm not sure if I'm going to give those a test or not. Hopefully I will be able to, but I'm sure those will come later. But yes, I definitely recommend the Perun V2 Optical, especially for around 100 bucks. Definitely well worth the cost on that. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.